Amid the approach of the highly anticipated G20 summit, a palpable sense of excitement and security permeated the United States. At the center of it all was President Joe Biden, and safeguarding his life and well-being became the paramount concern. What unfolded was a mesmerizing tapestry of intricate preparations, transforming even routine aspects of his visit into captivating tales of security and protocol. Each location on the president's meticulously planned itinerary underwent rigorous sanitization, rendering it virtually impervious to public access. Security personnel were assigned specific posts, adhering unfailingly to their designated responsibilities. The stringent measures were a direct response to the sheer magnitude of the 20 summit and the ever-present specter of potential threats. However, what truly stood out were the multi-layered security measures in place when the American president embarked on international travel, such as during the 20 summit, a unique protocol was invoked, a response born from a traumatic chapter in history. The 1981 incident when President Ronald Reagan fell victim to an assassination attempt by a mentally disturbed individual. To avert any reoccurrence of such horrors, the Secret Service staff conducted exhaustive investigations, meticulously charting the proximity of mental hospitals and scrutinizing the recent release of patients. The monumental effort invested in these security protocols commenced months in advance, meticulously orchestrated to guarantee the president's safety on foreign soil. It involved a complex choreography of various agencies and departments, spanning from the US Secret Service to the CPA and the host country's intelligence agencies, exemplified by India's raw and I. When the president embarked on international journeys, an advanced group was formed a full three months prior, tasked with ensuring seamless operations regardless of the destination. Their responsibilities spanned a vast spectrum, encompassing transportation logistics, communication systems, and the president's protection, among other critical elements. Airborne security became an overriding priority during the president's international travels. The involvement of multiple countries' air traffic control, ATCHESY systems was a necessity, and they had to function with unwavering precision to safeguard the president's security. The sanctity of, of Air Force One, the president's designated aircraft, took precedence with continuous monitoring and intelligence gathering to thwart potential threats. Air Force One was no ordinary aircraft. It stood as a paragon of technology and security, boasting defenses against a litany of threats, ranging from hijackings to electromagnetic pulses. This aircraft was an impervious fortress in the sky. The President's airlift group was entrusted with its security, overseeing every facet of its journey from its takeoff, of its takeoff in the US to its safe landing in the host country. Upon arrival, the security measures persisted, and the President's convoy featuring the iconic The Beast, a heavily fortified presidential vehicle, was a spectacle in itself. Comprising a 50-car caravan and over 100 staff members, including Secret Service agents and an array of security personnel, this motorcade left no stone unturned in safeguarding every aspect of the president's journey from the airport to the hotel. The hotel itself underwent a remarkable transformation to ensure the president's safety. From secure communication systems to bulletproof windows, no detail was deemed too small to escape scrutiny. Even the hotel staff underwent meticulous vetting, a precautionary measure to neutralize any potential threats. The security apparatus extended its watchful eye beyond the hotel to encompass the entire route taken by the president. Designated commanders were entrusted with specific zones, ensuring continuous and unyielding protection. In the event of emergencies, meticulously devised rescue plans stood at the ready, complete with commandos poised for immediate deployment. For the 20 summit, a gathering of leaders from across the globe, security assumed 
an even more monumental dimension, with 29 national leaders and over 1,200 high-level dignitaries in attendance. The security machinery was on high alert. Delhi, the host city, became a fortress, enveloped in layers of security, from the declaration of a no-fly zone to the deployment of cutting-edge anti-drone technology. The security measures at the summit were nothing short of awe-inspiring. Missiles stood at the ready, capable of intercepting potential threats from the sky within a range of 25 to 30 kilometers. Surveillance zones enveloped the city, ensuring no blind spots in the comprehensive defense strategy. An integrated command control room maintained 24-7 vigilance, providing live feeds of the entire airspace. Even Indira Gandhi International Airport assumed a pivotal role in the security matrix. Its arrangements were tailored not only to securely receive dignitaries, but also to house their planes in secure hangars, leaving no room for compromise. In the end, the narrative of the security measures for President Biden's visit to the 20 summit was an elaborate tale of meticulous planning, cutting, edge technology, and unwavering dedication. It represented a marvel of modern security where every detail, no matter how many, carried profound significance and every potential threat was met with resolute vigilance. The intricacy of the security measures extended even further, revealing the depths of preparation and the extent to which the safety of the American president and all attendees was paramount. Amid the preparations, a stunning level of coordination emerged. The security personnel involved, numbering over 50,000 police officers, commandos, and paramilitary forces, operated in unison like a well-oiled machine. Surveillance reached unprecedented levels, with more than 40,000 CTV cameras deployed, including cutting-edge facial recognition technology. This formidable surveillance network ensured that every corner within a 35-kilometer radius was under constant scrutiny. Other remarkable elements of the security apparatus included the deployment of snipers on rooftops and highly trained sniffer dogs patrolling the ground, diligently sniffing for potential threats. To further enhance security, a newly constructed tunnel beneath Prakriti Maiden was manned by vigilant security personnel ready to respond to any potential security breaches. But the extensive preparations didn't stop there. All 23 five-star hotels in Delhi, where dignitaries were lodged, came under intensive surveillance, both from the sky and the ground. A patrolling chopper kept a vigilant eye on the entire area. Hospitals were not left out of the security equation. Three of Delhi's largest hospitals were placed on high alert ready to respond to any emergency. Equally remarkable was the armament of the security forces. They were armed with the latest weapons, ensuring they were well prepared for any unforeseen eventuality. This arsenal of cutting edge weaponry was a testament to the commitment to minimizing damage in the event of an unexpected threat. The security measures were not confined to the ground. In the airspace, the sky was divided into three surveillance zones, each serving a distinct role in the comprehensive security strategy. Fighter jets and helicopters were on standby, poised to neutralize any suspicious activity within a 100 kilometer radius. Specific aircraft like Rafale, Jaguar and MiG-29 were deployed for this mission, ready to eliminate any threat that dared to breach the airspace. One particularly notable aspect of the security measures was the unique protocol surrounding Air Force One, the official air traffic control designated call sign for a United States Air Force Air Corps aircraft carrying the President of the United States. Air Force One didn't park in a conventional bay, but on the runway itself. This strategic decision was rooted in the need for swift action in the event of a sudden threat. The presence of VIPs arriving and departing led to adjustments and potential delays for domestic flights in India, but it was a small price to pay for the assurance of safety. The story of security for the G G20 summit was one of meticulous planning, a relentless pursuit of cutting-edge technology, 
and the unwavering dedication of security personnel. The security apparatus left no stone unturned, and every possible threat, whether from the ground or the sky, was met with a formidable defense. It was a monumental effort, culminating in a summit that showcased not only the world's most powerful leaders, but also the pinnacle of modern security practices.